week. So these are the topics that we're going to discuss or tackle for this meeting, which are research report, project proposal, and position paper. And the lesson objectives, at the end of the lesson, you're able to determine the purpose of the research report, project proposal, and position paper, and identify the features of an effective research report, a project proposal, and a position paper. Okay, first, let's discuss research report. Okay, I know you're already familiar with this one because we discussed this um, in APP, just a short um, discussion in APP and a thorough discussion in practical research one. Okay, so let me ask you guys, um, what is your definition of research? Okay, Janelin. Yes, sir. Okay, what is research for you? What have you learned about research? I know, sir. Um, searching, uh, searching other uh, meaning, sir, or kanang related and na, na study, sir, to know about that more. Okay, that's good. That, that's correct. So, that's usually part of that's usually part of review of related literature. So you're going to search for related topics about the topic that you're going to deal with in your research, things that uh, you're going to conduct. How about you, Jun Mar? What's your definition of research? I don't say the same same answer. <laughs> Lahit na po. Ano, sir? Sa report, sir? Research? Research. Research. Research lang, sir? Research report or research, same thing. Ano, sir? Gathering information. Gathering information. Sir, may na. Okay, so... You say research or it, analyzing data. You're going to gather data um, and you're going to analyze those data. How about you, Daryl? What is research for you? What's your definition of research based on your accumulated learnings and our previous discussions? Questions na gusto matubag. Exactly. If you have inquiries, if you have uh, problems that you want to address, you want to answer, then you can undergo research in order to answer, in order to address research problems. Right? That's good. Okay. We see research report. It is an expanded paper that presents interpretations and analysis of a phenomenon based on experiments and previous information so that readers can better understand it. So basically, when you say research report, it's like an um, inquiry or investigative report, but it's different from other investigations. Since research, you need to undergo um, scientific process or scientific method. Since your research, this kind of investigation should have a strong basis, meaning it's very important that you can provide or extract or generate factual information about your investigation. There should be supporting um, evidence that can suffice, that can solidify the claims so that you can produce genuine or factual information. So you can undergo experimentations, you can um, conduct surveys and other related processes or methods in order to produce such research studies in a new research report. Okay, parts of research report. Okay, so in writing a research, you need to consider these necessary elements in order to produce a good output or good research report. Okay, first is the title page. I know you're already familiar with this one because you are currently conducting your research. And we basically follow this format. It's like um, research article. 
that's the format that we're using in your practical research one um, research study first is the title page title page contains an informative title that describes the content of the paper the name of the authors address our affiliations and date of submission say so title page so basically it provides the title of the research the researchers and um, the institution department wherein uh, you're going to submit the research and the date that uh, the date when you submitted the research. So in the title page, uh, since it contains our title, it should give the readers the impression what are the things that they're going to encounter or what are the things that um, they will read in your research. So the title itself can give the initial knowledge of what is the research all about. Next is the abstract. Abstract contains the summary of the research findings and conclusions. It briefly presents the context of the study, research questions or objectives, methodology, major findings, conclusions, and sometimes implications. So abstract, it is the bird's eye view of your research. Um, it provides an index, it provides the whole summary, the whole synthesis of your research, meaning the abstract you're not going to provide new information about your research. It's just a summary of your whole paper. So it contains um, um, a short context or a short background of your study, um, the important methodology or process that the research used, like the research design, or it could be the um, theoretical framework or theory based used in a study, um, the findings, the conclusions, and the implications, recommendations um, in your research. And it also contains the keywords. So say keywords, these are the words that are uh, dominantly used or prominently used in your study. Keywords are important when you search for um, related literature and related studies for your um, for a specific study okay for example if your study will be published then it will be uploaded in the internet and it's um, it's available in Google search or any Google uh, sorry call it um, search engine like say Yahoo so Google or Google Scholar to be specific so through keywords, we can identify which are the articles that possibly related to your topic. So that's the purpose of keywords. The next, the introduction explains the current state of the field and identifies research gaps. It also the part where the research focus is presented by addressing the identified gaps in the topic. It puts the research topic in context. So introduction, um, it presents the background of the study. So it provides the context, it provides the gap, it provides the problem that you're going to deal with, um, other related literature, um, related information about the topic, um, related studies, um, whether it is contextualized in the local or national or international, and how you're going to explain, um, how are going to address or fill in the gap. So in introduction, as what we learned during our previous discussion, there are steps or um, the necessary information that we need to follow, like yung kay John Wales or moves, yung kay John Wales na cars. So, meron siyang moves na pinafollow in order to come up with a thorough and substantial na research introduction. The same thing with um, abstract. So, meron din siyang tinatawag na moves. 
Then we have literature review. It contains the summary and synthesis of all available sources directly related to the study. In a research report, the literature review is divided into two sections, related concepts and related studies. So in related literature, we're going to include all the related information about your study. So in literature review, we're going to evaluate, we're going to analyze, we're going to synthesize the related literature that you have searched. In your from your resources or references. So you need to evaluate if these resources or references can be useful for your study. So um, through um, related literature, you identify what will be the possible theoretical framework or conceptual framework, what will be the possible research design for your study. So there are two main sections on related concepts and related, uh, related studies. For your uh, study doing sa practical research one, usually or you just uh, included the related concepts since the concepts and ideas or information related sa study ninyo, yun lang in-include ninyo. So whereas yung related studies, uh, hindi ko siya in-include since uh, your format is just research article. Our lead studies can be used if you are using a thesis format, thesis type format, just like what the grade 12 is using now. So basically, you see literature review, it contains the um, related information, related um, concepts, ideas, in your study. Methodology describes how the experiments or tests in the research were conducted. It presents the context within which the study was conducted, the participants, the instruments used, the data gathering procedure, and the data analysis. So say methodology, it, um, this section presents the method or process that you use for your study. It contains the um, research design, research participants or research respondents, um, research tool, research corpora, um, the research procedure. How did you come up with your study? How you're going to conduct, how you're go, are going to gather the information for your study. So basically, its uh, methodology refers to the section where the processes that you conducted sa study ninyo. The next, the results. See results factually describes the data gathered and the tables and graphs that summarize the collected data. Along with the tables and graphs are their respective interpretations. The flow of the results section should follow the flow of the research questions, problems, and objectives. Itong results, um, basically, this is the part wherein you're going to answer your statement of the problem. So the flow of your results and discussion will, determine, will be determined according to your statement of the problem. So if your research, um, research question or state of the problem, like sa study nila Janelena, what are the um, digital marketing objectives of digital marketers? So basically, in result and discussion should answer what are the digital marketing objectives or uh, kanila Darrell, so in study nila, what are the functions of social media? So basically, the result and discussion will answer their statement of the problem, which is, what are the functions of social media? Kanun siya dapat ang results and discussion. So in results and discussion, um, there are two main elements that you need to provide. Um, tables and gra or graphs, depending on uh, what you're going to use for, or utilize for your study and the interpretation of the graph or tables. So in table, you need to uh, provide the summary of your um, findings of your analysis in the tables. 
And then you need to provide narrative description of your study. So why are going, uh, you need to explain what are the things that you can see doon sa table ninyo. And there are uh, necessary ingredients when it comes to um, writing or necessary elements when it comes to writing your the narrative description of the table. So there should be the analysis, like the description of your table and the um, related literature or related theory that can support your claims or findings. So it's a discussion. It's uh, it's the same with the results. Um, they are paired. It provides an explanation of all the results in relation to the previous studies presented in the literature review. So, um, usually, the results and discussion are just uh, being paired. Uh, the same chapter, the same part lang sila. So discussion, it presents the um, description or narrative part doon sa tables and graphs that you presented doon sa results ninyo. Then conclusion, it contains the restatement of the major findings, the limitations of the study, the recommendations and the implications. Note that in some cases, the conclusion is integrated into the discussion. Okay. In conclusion, um, we can also see this one doon sa result and discussion because um, there are formats in writing a research report or thesis or any res uh, research related na writing composition included na yung concluding part doon sa results and discussion. So in conclusion, it contains the restatement of the major findings. So um, what, can, uh, what are the things that you can deduce based on the results and findings of your study? So what, um, what can you recommend? What are the implications? What can you infer based on the results of your study? That's the conclusion. And then references, it contains the different sources used in the study. Okay. References, um, this is the section wherein you're going to provide all the materials that you use for your study, um, spe uh, specifically your um, the, auth the works of the various authors that you use for your study. So in references, you need to follow a specific referencing style. So in your case, dun sa practical research ninyo, um, you use APA style for your study. So you need to list down all the um, information that you use for study that um, you extracted from other authors' works. Okay. So for research report, um, anyway, that, um, we already discussed that one, sa practical research one, just a short um, introduction or uh, recap lang. Okay, next is the project proposal. Say, project proposal, there are various types. So we have the solicited internal, unsolicited internal, solicited external, and Unsolicited, uh, unsolicited external. Okay, when we say project proposal, this is the um, type of writing composition that you may use if you want to propose a project or pitch a project and you need support from um, possible benefactors in order to fund your project. So basically, project proposal, the purpose is to pitch possible benefactors or um, supporters for your project. Na pwede mag-fund. It's because when you say project, it needs um, you call that financial aspects in order to implement such project. So, in project, um, conducting project proposal, um, it's also a way of giving uh, prob um, 
an answer to a specific problem or issue that should be addressed that you can see doon sa community ninyo or organization or institution. So basically, project proposal, um, if there's a problem that should be addressed and there are a method of addressing that problem and it needs the support, the financial support. Okay, so the types of project proposal, first is the solicited internal. Say so solicited internal, it is used when the target reader is within the organization. It responds to a specific requests within the organization. The problem has been identified within the organization and the decision to solve it has been made. So when we say solicited internal, your target readers or target audience for your proposal are within the organization or institution. Okay, for example, if I'm going to write a project proposal and my intended readers for that proposal are just people within my organization or institution, for example, the CCSA, if target readers score mga teachers ng CCSA or yung admin ng CCSA, that's example of solicited internal. And their specific requests, meaning there's an identified problem and there are specific people that wanted to address that problem. So, ganun ang solicited internal. So, um, it's, a, it's a response to a specific um, request wherein a problem should be addressed doon sa institution or organization. Next is unsolicited internal. It is used when the target reader is within the organization. It is a self-initiated proposal that no one asked for. Ito namang unsol uh, unsolicited internal, the same with solicited internal. Yung intended or target readers or audience ay nandun lang sa within the institution. But the, prob uh, the difference is that itong unsolicited internal this is um, self-initiated, meaning um, it's an initiative of the one who um, proposed the project or pitched the project, meaning hindi siya requested. Unlike solicited internal, um, requested siya. But in unsolicited internal, it's an uh, initiative, self-initiated. Next is solicited external. It is used when the target reader is not within the organization. It responds to a specific request from someone who is not within the company. And the problem has been identified and the decision to solve it has been made. Itong solicited external, if your target um, readers or intended um, audience are outside of the organization or institution, Halimbawa, if the problem is identified within the um, CCSA, pero yung readers ko outside, hindi siya part ng institution. Hindi taga CCSA. Ganun siya. Okay, halimbawa, when we solicit, uh, solicit for um, to mga companies or businesses na hindi siya related sa CCSA. That's an example of solicited external. The problem is within the CCSA, meaning there's a problem that should be uh, should be sufficed through projects. Pero yung uh, readers or target the target audience hindi taga CCSA. So ganun solicited external. And we have unsolicited external. It is used when the target reader is not within the organization. It is a self-initiated proposal that no one asks for. The target reader has not yet identified that a problem exists. Hence, no decision has been made to solve the problem. Okay, ito naman unsolicited external. The same with solicited external. Yung intended or target readers um, are outside your organization. But the thing is, itong unsolicited, unsolicited external, it's um, your self-initiated action or initiative mo. And 
unlike sa solicited external, it's a request. It's a formal request, pero dito it's um, self-initiated or initiative mo. So that's the difference between unsolicited external and solicited external. So that's how we're going to identify on making a project proposal. The next one, the parts of a project proposal. Okay, first we have cover letter, title page, abstract or executive summary, context of the proposal, project justification, and personal involved. Okay, the, uh, for the first part, we say cover letter, it introduces the proposal to the reader. Okay, when I craft or design a project proposal, it should contain first the cover letter since um, it's the first thing that the readers should read dun sa project proposal because that's the introduction of your uh, research um, project proposal. So, um, it, uh, in cover letter, it provides the title, the date of the proposal, um, what kind of request, if solicited ba siya, unsolicited, um, internal or external, ganun siya. Then the general purpose and the scope of the proposal. And the title page. Say so title page, um, it includes the project title that is concise and informative. Um, the difference between cover letter and title page is that although cover letter, it also contains the title of the proposal, but in cover letter, um, it's more of um, a letter that should be addressed doon sa, a formal letter that should be addressed to the office, to the organization, institution um, of, your, uh, the tar of your target audience or target reader. So next part is the abstract or executive summary. You see abstract or executive summary, um, it includes the objectives, the implementing organization. So you need to also introduce your organization so that your target audience or target readers will know who are our, the background of the authors of the project proposal. And what's the major project activities? And it also, uh, also should contain the cost of your project. Remember your project proposal, um, when you want to pitch it, you need, uh, you need to target um, specific people that can fund your project. So that's why kailangan yung cost ng project niyo. Then next is the context of the proposal. And it describes the setting of your um, project. Um, it includes the um, socioeconomic, the cultural, political background. Um, kung saan nakasituate yung project ninyo. So, in context, in context of the proposal, it also contains the data collected. Okay, before you can uh, you can make a project proposal, kasi you need to conduct a pilot uh, testing muna, or um, they call that data gathering, para sa um, sa uh, project proposal nagagawin ninyo like needs analysis. Um, needs analysis can be used in order to identify what are the uh, needs na kailangan ng isang community. Okay, halimbawa, when you make community development or community project, community service, you need to um, gather information first. What are the needs of that com specific community that your project can suffice or can give? Then next is project justification. Okay, you need to justify your project. Bakit kailangan ninyo i-conduct? Why do you need to conduct this project or why you need to implement this uh, uh, project? Meaning, you need to rationalize. You need to provide a rationale of your study. So, um, 
it may provide the problem. Then next is how we're going to solve the problem. Then you need to provide or justify that the problem is relevant. Kailangan siya, um, there should be an urgent need to address the problem. And that specific project proposal should be rationalized that um, relevant yung method ninyo in, uh, on how to address such problem. Then personal involved. And who are the persons that um, should involve the project? So, sino yung mga tao na kailangan uh, or the manpower or the logistics of your um, project. The people that will help you in implementing the project. The next is project implementation. Ito na yung part wherein you're going to lay out your plan. So um, it may contain the scheduling, um, the activities that you're going to do for that schedule. Um, what what are the purpose? What's the relevance of those activities doon sa gagawin ninyo na project? The next is budget. Itong budget, it presents the expected, uh, expected um, income or expenses that you'll be needing for your project because um, since ipipitch mo yung project, so you need fundings, so kailangan nakaspecify yung uh, budget so that your target sponsors will know the specific amount that they will give to you para sa uh, project ninyo. The next is monitoring and evaluation. Say monitoring and evaluation, kailangan kasi um, evaluate yung project ninyo if effective ba siya or hindi. So, kailangan um, yung project ninyo um, there should be um, relevant effect kung na-alleviate ba yung project or na-address ba yung um, problem ninyo. So there should be evaluation if effective ba yung project implementation and uh, project proposal as a whole. Then next is reporting schemes. So we're going to um, report your whole project. So your whole, um, reporting scheme, um, kailangan siya since you need to give reports doon sa um, sponsors ninyo or people that should know kung paano nag-transpire yung project ninyo. So um, that's a reporting scheme. It's also a way of being a uh, good steward doon sa uh, project ninyo kasi it involves money. So kailangan siya mayroong financial report kung uh, magkano yung, na, uh, yung expenses ninyo, kung ano yung naging uh, relevant effects, kailangan i-report ninyo so that your sponsors or benefactors will know if may purpose ba yung pag-sponsor nila dun sa project ninyo. The next is conclusion. So yung conclusion, you need to provide uh, um, ano yung naging benefits ng yung project ninyo. Ano yung naging benefits doon sa lahat ng stakeholders. Um, also provide the summary. Also provides the evaluation doon sa uh, project ninyo. The next is the references. Okay, you may include the materials that you use or resources that you use para malay out yung plan ninyo. Yung the whole uh, project proposal. Okay. We say when you make project proposal kasi you need to conduct the uh, research kasi. So kailangan yung sa project implementation, kailangan research based siya. So the activities that you're going to use for your study, kailangan research based siya so that you will know that relevant yung methods ninyo or process ninyo when you conduct the project. So that's pro um, project proposal. So let's go to position paper. A position paper is a type of academic writing that presents one stand or viewpoint on a particular issue. 
the main objective of writing a position paper is to take part in a large debate by stating your arguments and propose proposed course of action. So, position paper, it's like a written debate. So, in position paper, you're going to provide your um, your stand or position about a particular issue or topic. So. If there's an existing issue or problem, you can make a position paper on what's your stand, how you're going to um, suffice those problems or issues. That's the um, that's the function or purpose of position paper. Okay, in writing a position paper, there are necessary parts that you need to follow. So basically. Um, the basic elements in writing an essay, um, introduction, body, at saka conclusion. The introduction uses a lead that grabs the attention of the readers, meaning you need to, uh, in introduction, you need to provide information that catch the attention of the readers. Then defines the issue and provides a thorough background, meaning you need to contextualize, you need to provide the setting of your issue. You define your issue and what are the things that are related to that issue and provides a general statement of your position through a thesis statement. In introduction, it's very important that you need to provide your thesis statement. It should be directly stated or direct, um, um, directly expressed. Explicit dapat siya yung thesis statement because that's your stand or position about the issue. The next is the body. In the body, it states your main arguments and provides sufficient evidence. In your body, you need to um, thoroughly discuss your main arguments that are connected to your thesis statement that's in introduction. Okay, so you need to expound your arguments. And it's not just you're going to provide your claims, but you need to present evidence that can support and um, solidify your claims. So it's very important that you should not um, argue and debate in your position paper. You also need to provide evidence so that your, um, your claims or your arguments are rational, justifiable, or reasonable. So, then provides counter arguments against possible weaknesses of your arguments. So you need to understand that when making a position paper, there are possibilities that um, the opposition can um, point out the weaknesses in your paper. So before they can point, uh, before they can point that out, the loopholes of your position, you need to counter them. Meaning, you need to analyze and to evaluate what will be the possible things that can be used against your arguments. And siya ang uh, position paper. So, kailangan you need to foresee, you need to have a foresight para um, you will be prepared what will be the possible things that I will be used against your position. The next is conclusion. Conclusion restates your position and main arguments. Itong conclusion, um, basically, you're just going to restate your thesis statement. Meaning you just have to paraphrase, you just have to summarize. Um, as long as the ideas or thoughts presented in the conclusion the same with your um, thesis statement or your main arguments. And in conclusion, it may also include your recommendations. What will be the things that uh, you need to do after you provide your main arguments? What will be the recommendations? What will be the course of action that you need to take after you provided your main arguments? Okay. You also need to explain why your position is better than the others. So, or the uh, better than the opposition or the other party. Then you need to end with a, a powerful closing statement so that it will give a, an impactful impression to your readers. 
then guidelines in writing a position paper. First is begin the writing process with in-depth research about the issue at hand. So this is what I always um, remind, um, this is what I always tell you that when you write something, you need to equip yourself first with adequate knowledge of the topic that you're going to write. Thus, it's very important that you need to read a lot of information that are related to your topic, meaning you need to search for related literature or related information that you can use when you write your um, any written composition. Now. Then be aware of the various positions about the issue and explain and analyze them objectively. So you need to be specific about your position, your stand about the issue, and you need to thoroughly explain it. Then reflect on your position, identify its weaknesses. So as what I've mentioned earlier, you need to identify or determine what will be the possible loopholes of your uh, position. Thus, by identifying the weaknesses and um, loopholes of your position, then you can counter it before, your, um, op before the opposition can point that out. And establish your credibility by citing reliable sources. When um, writing a position, it's very important that you provide um, sufficient evidence that can support your claims or your arguments. Thus, it's very important that you need to cite sources, but you need to make sure that your sources are reliable. So, dapat hindi siya fake news. Kasi the internet, and raming, um, um, information na nagkalat na hindi siya reliable that are not truthful then present a unique way of approaching the issue so um, it's up to you who are going to devise this kind of um, technique or style when it comes to presenting your um, position or your stance about the issue so it's up to you um, what's your style? Because um, there are different styles kasi based on the preferences of the authors. As long as uh, rational siya, yung style ninyo. And that can attract the readers or can um, give an impact. Then analyze your target readers and align your arguments to their beliefs, needs, interests, and motivations. So it's very important that you need to identify your readers so that you will know what kind of language that you'll be using so that they will understand. So it's very important aside from um, being sound so intellectual, kailangan your readers should understand the things that you want to um, convey to your readers. Then summarize the other side's counter arguments and refute with, uh, with evidence. So when you counter the claims of the opposition or when you refute them, you also need to provide evidence. Then define unfamiliar terms at first mention. So if you use um, terminologies that are hard to understand or a specific shop for um, a specific uh, a specific profession like yung mga jargons or yung mga specific terminologies, you need to define it so that your target readers will understand. Then use an active voice as much as possible. This will make your tone dynamic and firm. See, active voice meaning you are owning your um, arguments. You are owning your claims doon sa position in you. So which means that you are firm about your stand about that particular issue. Say active voice. Then arrange your evidence logically using an inductive or deductive approach. So it's up to you. It's um, depends sa style. Kung inductive or deductive ba yung approach in you. As long as logical yung pagka-present ng evidence, um, you may use yung mga, uh, cohesive devices, dapat connected yung ideas yun. dapat there should be unity in your um, paper. Then check your paper for fallacies and revise accordingly. So say fallacies, if you use 
mga deceptive appeals sa paper ninyo. So you need to check that out. Kasi that can be used against you. That can be used by the opposition um, to counter your claims also. Then use ethical, logical, and emotional appeals. So depende if appropriate siya doon sa issue. Especially the emotional appeals. Emotional appeals sometimes kasi, or most of the times, um, that can be abused. Pero siya ma-abuse kasi tinatarget yung emotions ng tao. So dapat balance siya. Um, there should be the ethical, the logical, and emotional appeals. You should target the, the intellect, the character, and the emotions of the people, of your target audience. Then that's the end of our discussion. Okay, do you have questions, clarifications about the issue? Are we clear about the, um, our topic? Sir? Hmm. Kapag ko sa position paper, sir, na buha to na mo. Oo. Wala kaya na kung nag-gets itong, ano, sir, ba, topic? Ah, katong topic? Yes, sir. The issue that I presented there is yung, are you familiar with political party? Yung sa, sa Congress ba? Like, mga, ano, uh, uh, anak bayan, makabayan, marino party list, Familiar mo, Ana? Wala ko. Hindi ko familiar, Ana. Okay. <laughs> sir, ka na nag-arali, sir, no? Oh, it's not just about yung mga nag -arali, but they are part, uh, they have, uh, they have seats in the Congress, like, sa Kabataan Party List. Kana sila. As a whole, ako ang, ano, akong ginamin. Not just those who oppose the government, but those who also um, support the government or kahit mga neutral lang, as long as yung party, whole party list system ng Philippines, ng Congress. Kasi sa, di ba, sa um, um, branches ng government natin, there are uh, three equal branches. The judicial, the executive, and then the, ang tawag nito sa, Kalimut ko sa isa. Wait lang. Check na ako ha. Ah. Judicial, executive, at saka sa legislative. Sa executive part, uh, dira ang sa president. Office of the president. Siya. And sa cabinet members. Muna, executive part. And uh, cabinet departments. Then sa uh, judicial, yung mga Supreme Court sa uh, Court Justices. Ganun siya ang judicial. Then sa legislative, ito yung House of Cong uh, sa Sen House of Senate at saka House of Congress. Sa lower house at saka upper house. Yung sa Congress, nadira ang sa lower house, nadira ang mga uh, district representatives and political parties na na-elect sa public. So, muna akong ginamin kung need ba or uh, beneficial ba or dili ba effective ang political party system sa Philippines. So, what's your stand uh, about that issue? If beneficial ba siya or ineffectual, meaning ineffective? So, dili na ba siya necessary? So, nagets uh, ni Mudarel. So, you need to search lang about inf uh, information about the political party system that is in the Philippines. If you have questions, further clarifications. By the way, next meeting na ha, i-discuss na ako after we um, discuss itong writing professional correspondence katong sa assignments in sa reading and writing. Like, how you're going to make email signature, um, how you're going to make letter, application letter for college admission, employment, at saka resume sa next meeting na. By the way, last, uh, next meeting will be the last meeting natin sa, uh, I mean, last meeting para sa reading and writing sa virtual. 
kasi last na umana ta o discuss sa tanang lessons. Then I will give you the time to um, make your assignments or uh, para sa research ba ninyo. So it's up to you. are going to uh, maximize your, our remaining time. Kasi last meeting na natin, next meeting. Then that's the time I will give to you your assign, uh, details for your assignment. Although I already posted the details, um, further instructions lang. And I will also teach you um, how you're going to uh, make those application letters, resumes, and the tools or uh, software na pwede ninyo gamitin para sa email signature. Ganun. Okay, do you have further clarifications? Questions? Okay, if none, I think that's it. That's the end of our um, class discussion. And I'm going to end na our class. Thank you very much for coming, guys.